Yo, King Dumb, community vibes, community ties. Uh. Terrence Tucker is the brother who's connecting the tribe. My God, Terrence Tucker. It's been a long time, man. It's been too long. I think it's been the a long time. We actually were in each other's space was at the last MA Lee Scholarship Gala. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. That was what, 2017, I believe? Man, that was like three years ago, right? Three, yeah. right, yeah, three years ago, right? Three years ago. It's been a long time, man, but it's a blessing. Listen, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing, man. It's a privilege and an honor. You know what I'm saying? Happy on. No, same here for me. You know, we know you're a busy man, so we definitely don't take this time for granted, man. We know we know that you out there with them palm trees, man, them beautiful water, beautiful women. So we're gonna it's, hold you long. Okay, it's we will not. <laughs> we will not hold you long, man. But we are so thankful, uh, you know, to to you know have you on the you know community vibes, man, podcast, man where we highlight, you know, um, phenomenal people that are doing phenomenal things within their respective communities. And we know that you are the GOAT for this. Like, you have been putting people on for a long time. You put me on, brother. You you, you were the first first person to put me on a flyer. And I oh, felt wow. so honored. <laughs> first person, man, you put me in front of everybody and say, here's Terrence Tucker. Listen, and I will for, for, forever, forever, man, you know what I'm saying, be indebted to you for that, brother. Well, here's the thing. I believe in giving people their just due. Right. And I, like you were someone who was putting in the work, and I felt it was important for not only people who were in attendance to recognize that, but I wanted people who were outside of the venue to know mm. who Aaron Stucker was and who he is as a person. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Man, I, hey, man, I appreciate that though. So, you know, you know, for those who have been living up on the rock, right? Uh, those who don't know Dr. Lee, right? For those who do not know your greatness now, this man is from the big city. Well, first of all, he's from the county of Orangeburg County. Correct. correct? Yes. In a small town called Vance. I uh, know. It's not Vance? Not Vance. What is it? Couple of more letters. Utahville. Utahville! Yeah! But they like right there though, right? They're right there, but a significant difference, all right? Okay, a significant <laughs> difference. It's a significant, okay, listen. Listen, yo, I stand corrected. Utahville, stand up, man. This yeah. is one of, you know what I'm saying, one of Utahville's, you know what I'm saying, legendary, legend, legendary figures, man. You know what I'm oh, saying? Man. Now, what high school you went to, Dr. Lee? Say that again? Well, um, so you went to Holly Hill Roberts? I went to Holly Hill Roberts, yes. Holly Hill Roberts, stand up, man. Bulldogs, stand up. Bulldogs, class of 1994. Oh, man, oh, man, you're telling your age out here, man. You're and, telling your age. And, <laughs> listen, I'm at a point where I listen, can't hide it anymore. You know, it is what it is. Listen, man, listen. A man, you look like, man, you're 30 years old out there, man. Trust me, trust me, man. You, I'll take it. Man, you don't look a bit over 29, man, so you good. Listen, that's that Los Angeles son that's doing it to you, man. You think that's what it is? That's that Los Angeles son. <laughs> don't tell you that's what it is. Now, <laughs> brother, you went to a HBCU, yes. okay? But prior to that, man, that 17-year-old young man, did he see this guy right here? Right? No. Leaving Holly Hill Roberts, did he see this guy? No, he never saw this guy. Uh, he saw a guy, and all he knew was that he needed to work towards whatever he thought he was seeing. Mm -hmm. Allow God to take control at whatever happened. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the young guy who had a lot of dreams, wanted to mm -hmm. think. You know, the interesting thing about my life is that when I was young, people would always ask, what is it that you want to be when you grow up? Mm. Always say two things. I said, I wanted to be a doctor and I wanted to be a teacher. And so mm. when I think back in retrospect, I never just settled on doing one thing. I always felt like my life was destined to do multiple things. Wow. 
And so even as I spoke that at that age, I never really understood that it would manifest into multiple things, multiple streams as I became this man. Wow, wow. Listen, listen, Doc. Now we, we you know, we're nobody without our family. Nobody exactly. without our family. Your family means so much to you. Why is that? My family means a lot to me because number one, they are the most supportive family mm. member that anybody could ever have. Mm. From the littlest thing that I am involved in, they're always rooting me on as if it's as monumental to, to them. And so for that, you know, I can appreciate them for how they have supported me all the years. And then not only that, but they are so loving. Yes, they are. Family genuinely shows me love. It's not just a saying, they actually put an action behind the word. And of course, we all love only means what it means if action is applied to it. Yes. So yeah, I, I could not be who I am because a lot of them actually sacrificed for me to become the man that I am. You know, a lot yes. of them did things for me as I was growing up that they probably didn't do for their own kids. Wow. So that speaks to the integrity speaks of volumes. right. Speaks volumes to who they are as family members. So from the Lees, Palmers, and the Browns and the yeah, Washington. Call them out. Call them out. All, you know, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, call them out, man. Call them out because see that young seventeen-year-old, right, Maurice Lee, right? That that young seventeen-year-old, right, left Utahville. Right, and he decided to go to a HBCU. Yes. Right, South Carolina State University. Yes. Why South Carolina State University? Why not? Wow. South Carolina University is rich with a lot yeah. of heritage. They have a lot of great individuals that came out of that institution. Mm -hmm. I, like for all the things that transpired at the university that are spoken and unspoken, I felt like it created a great learning tool and a learning pool mm. for stu students. And so I felt at that time, of course, I was pressured to go to other types of universities, but mm -hmm. I felt I was doing an injustice to myself mm -hmm. as a young black man that grew up in Orangeburg had I right. not well, Orangeburg County, had I not attended South Carolina State University. Mm. And coupled with that, a lot of my family members attended the university as well. So I felt like mm. it was important for me to carry on that tradition. So, wow. It's really one of the best decisions that I've ever made because mm. as you talk about how I am the man that I am, I would never be the man that I am, partly due to South Carolina State University, the people that I was able to connect with the education that I received and the experiences that I received as well. Right. Totally different from other universities that I've ever attended, but right. that own South Carolina State University, so rich and so diverse. And so I'm definitely indebted to them and the importance they played in my life. Wow, man, listen, listen, you, 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 you made so many friends while you were there. Yeah. Um, you know, and not only friends, you know, but a family. Yes. And, um, you know, we all know you made a mistake while you was there. You know, yeah. you know, um, no. you know, you... Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna finish. We, won't, we won't say no. We, 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 we won't call out that organization's name, right? But yeah. that young man that came in when he was a freshman, right from Utahville to that young man that walked across that stage right when he when he received his degree how did that so my question is how did did that young man change from 17 to walk across that stage it was an immediate change because he had to really grow up wow no longer and I want to say that I could not rely on parents and family members, mm -hmm. but I, at that moment, it was up to me to take my life further. Mm. I, anybody else as a crutch. Right. And so 
really learned a lot about life and I learned a lot about people the moment I walked across that stage. Mm. And man, you know, I could, <laughs> <laughs> man, what, what a journey. That's what I can yeah. say. What yeah. a journey. I learned life in a right. matter of 60 seconds. Like, yeah. okay, yeah. brother, what are you going to yeah. do? Ball, put your, balls in this, your court. The ball is in your court. You put your yeah. big man on and you <laughs> walk and you talk the talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you, man, because we all know how South Carolina State, man, you know, you know, has produced so many, so many man phenomenal people. Yes, you know, yes. you know, much like yourself. But you decided to take your talent somewhere else, leaving South Carolina State. And you went down to Charleston, right? Yes. So, you went to uh, medical school, correct? Yes, Medical University of South Carolina. Right. So, how did that, like, because that, that's a totally different environment, correct? Yes. So, how did that change you? Like, was that a culture shock for you? I wouldn't necessarily say a culture shock. Right. But definitely an eye-opening experience mm. because... For the first time, I was exposed to a lot of different people from various walks of life. Right. People from other countries, people mm. from other nationalities and ethnicities and so forth. And so I had to really learn what it meant to adapt to and thrive in what we called the world. Wow. Because I had to learn how to interact with everyone I had to learn how to accept the difference in everyone. Mm. And that's a great part of my learning and becoming who I am. Because right. not only who they are and who they were, I was learning me as well. Because right. we really don't know who we are and what we are until we are forced to interact with others. Wow. And that tells, wow. About, tells a lot about who that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, now, when now when you were there, you know, you know, we all know um, that you, you know, you uh, successfully completed um, that. What is it? I mean, because I, you know, because I know it was like a what six year process or seven year pro or what a four year process. What was it? Well. Yeah, my whole process was eight years, including the four years that I did at South Carolina State. Right, okay, okay, okay. So, the moment that you put that DR right in front of your name, what did that feel like for you? It wasn't so much about the DR. Mm. It was about what the DR stood for, mm. which meant that I had a huge responsibility at hand. Wow. And my responsibility was utilizing the four years of knowledge right. that I had gained at MUSC to right. now impart into others right. so that it could help sustain their lives and create a better lifestyle right. and create a better way of living mm. so that they could live longer than what is normally analyzed right. for individuals when it pertains to their race or when it pertains to other comorbid, I, mean, I can't even speak, comorbid diseases. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, that's what it was for me. It was just taking on the responsibility wow. to uh, help others, yeah. Wow. You know what you did, man, and you know, we, we, we actually worked together um, yes. For several years at Walgreens, yes. Walgreens. Walgreens. Stand up, Walgreens. <laughs> right. And, and um, you know, when I met you, man, you know, you were such, you were a humble, but very confident person. Mm -hmm. And your community meant so much you because your customers, you know, you know, um, your clients, customers, you know, what, you know, whatever you call them. They were more like family to you because yeah. they love Dr. Lee. Like 
they had to see Dr. Lee. Like, they came inside the store, man. They came through the drive through but they was coming yeah. to see Dr. Lee. Like, yeah. people knew Dr. Lee's, like, mothers, man, grandmothers, sons, yeah. daughters. Everybody knew Dr. Lee. So it wasn't just medicine um, that you were giving them, but it was just the whole vibe, man. Like, like yeah. you created your your own community there, man. Like, yeah. what went into that knowing that you know, you know, one, you know, you have people's lives really, you, you literally had people's lives right in your hand. And then yes. two, people loved you so much that they were just loyal to you. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. I think one of the one of the key things that I felt was important to do mm-hmm. was to create a level of comfort mm-hmm. between me and the patients. Because if I created that for them, then I felt like I was in a position to convey the best of my knowledge to them because as we all know when it comes down to health and health care and diseases that so many of us deal with it's such a taboo in our community we are afraid to talk about it right we are afraid to convey into the next person out of fear and so i wanted to somewhat take away the velvet rope so to speak and take away the veil so that people would be comfortable with speaking to me. And right. so I had to let them know, number one, that I too was a person just like them. Right. And you know, it wasn't about Dr. Lee, but it was about right. how I can help them to the best of my ability. So right. I always wanted to make everyone feel welcome. And out of that, I was able, like you said, to develop great relationships with a mm-hmm. lot of them and now I just call them all my family. You know, it's crazy That's because it yeah. yeah, sometimes when I'm logging on to Facebook, you know, I'll get a message, hey, we miss you at Walgreens and so forth yeah. and so forth. Yeah. So for me, I felt like I did what I was called and appointed to do at that particular time in that particular community and at that particular store. Right. Wow. This you changed so many people's lives, Mickey. You know, I'm sure so many people miss you, man. So many people miss yeah. you. That Walgreens is not the same without you there. Um, <laughs> listen, man, you you were a, you were you were a strong staple within that community. You know, and we 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 would drive past Walgreens, man, looking for the Cadillac truck. Looking for the where's the Cadillac truck, man? Okay, if the Cadillac truck ain't there, we ain't going in. Right, right. <laughs> We was looking for the Cadillac truck. Listen, it, 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 became, <laughs> it became a little overwhelming at times. <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing back memories. I'm bringing back memories. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So listen, yeah, yeah. So listen um, we also know that you are a very, very, you know, giving person. And you love your community. You know, beyond Walgreens, you yes. love your community and you love high school students. You love giving back. You love paying it forward, right? Yes. So let's talk about that phenomenal scholarship gala that you will mm-hmm. host, man. Let's talk about that, man. Dr. Lee, man. Dr. Lee brought the whole world to Orangeburg, right? <laughs> the whole world came to Orangeburg, man. Let's talk about that. What, what, first of all, what, you know, uh, what encouraged you to start that? You know, and where did you get the motivation from? Well, you know, if I can be as transparent as I possibly can, and I've told this story, you know, many times before, right as I was transitioning to college, uh, my family was hit real hard from a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so I had to really, really struggle and really rely on others family and friends to really navigate and get through college. Mm. As I always said, you know, once I got out, I want to do something Mm -hmm. that would afford me the opportunity to help someone else who may have been dealing with the same things that 
I was dealing with um, or who had like that financial difficulty and just needed just a little more to help them meet their goals so that they could possibly live out their dream. Right. And so when I got to my 30th birthday, I decided to have a birthday celebration. Mm. And the reason why I wanted to have it at my 30th year was because I began to think about a lot of my friends who had not made it to that age. Oh, and wow. so I felt it was monumental for me to do, but I just didn't want to have a party just to be having a party, you right. know, not that self-indulging. I didn't want right. I didn't want that. So I said, well, I'll have it and right. I will charge people thirty dollars mm. to attend. Right. So I took all the money that came from ticket sales mm -hmm. and I gave out scholarships that night and we had raised enough money to where we gave out 13 scholarships wow. that night and I thought that that was just going to be a one-time deal I thought okay yeah. that's it I did that's what it. I was supposed to do yeah <laughs> but let me tell you you know God has a certain way of using other instruments talk to him to make something really sound and resound in your ears. Man. And so people kept asking, so what are we gonna do for the next year? How, yeah. how are you gonna do the next year? Yeah. And wow, I hadn't thought about that. This was supposed to be just that. Right. And so then we had it for a second year and everybody was like, okay, well, I can't wait until the third year. And right. so immediately I knew that people looked forward to it. Right. And it also afforded them mm -hmm. to plant seeds as well. It afforded them the opportunity to pay it forward and give back as well. So yeah. not only was I doing it, but I opened it up to the community so that they could find a way yeah. to help. There's a African proverb that says, it takes a village to raise a child. Come on, come on. And so that's what I was doing. I was bringing together a village to help push yes. these students along. And so we had an event every year every in the year. month of August, right around yeah. my birthday. Yeah. Uh, because I felt like as life was being given unto me, yeah. it was my obligation and my responsibility to help someone else. And so we did a great run for 12 years in Orangeburg. And after I moved here, I could not invest in it the way that I wanted to. Fair, fair. So I decided to put a pause. Gotcha. Not a stop, but a pause. Not a stop, but a pause. So but a pause. You hear community vibes? Did you hear that community vibes? <laughs> There's a possibility. <laughs> And it may be coming back. It'll be coming back, but it'll be totally Little different. Little in Orangeburg, we coming back. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely coming back. coming back because you know it's something that's needed ongoing. Oh man, yeah. listen, you 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 impacted so many lives. Listen, that night was full of positivity. Yeah, full of just elegance and the class. You know, and just love and just family, family. Yeah. Listen, families on top of families. Everybody knew each other. Everybody knew each other. Yeah. Now yeah. there was, but 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 wait a minute, Doctor Lee. Wait a minute, now we, we ain't gonna let you slide with something. Okay, I'm you ready. You had some stars in the building. <laughs> you had some stars in the building, and everybody knew, but we didn't know them personally. <laughs> <laughs> My question is. How did you form those relationships with those stars, man, that came to little old Orangeburg just to show you love, man, that were not stuck up? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, you know, Terrence, one thing about me, I'm very strategic and intentional about everything that I do. Right. And so when it came down to the celebrities, I was always very careful about who I wanted in that space. Mm because I didn't want anyone to come in thinking that they were bigger than the cause. Mm. And so if that was something that was detected from me, I would totally no mix, nope, can't right. have it. 
Yeah. Right. Because it's about the students. It's not about right. Us, right. Right. Um, the, the second year that I had the gala, I invited a young man by the name of Darren DeWitt Henson that many may know from Soul Food and Stump the Yard. Yeah, Stump the Yard, yeah. Yeah, and now he's on our BET's Family Business. And yeah. he came the second year as a guest speaker. Yeah. And he was thoroughly impressed mm. by what was happening, that he wanted to be a part of it wow. ongoing. And so, he began to connect me with so many people here in LA who jumped at the opportunity to come and help pay it wow. forward. And so with many of them, like I'm, I never imagined that the relationships be ongoing. I, I thought it would be okay. You come, you present your, you present the award and bam, mm -hmm. you go about your business. Yeah. But it's something about Orangeburg, the people of Orangeburg, how they showed them so much love Man. that they felt like they were a part of yeah. Orangeburg. Oh, and, yeah. they, and they began to look forward to the event every year as well. Yeah. And so that's just how the whole rapport and relationship began between me and, you know, who people call celebrities. Um, I just call them recognizable. Ones. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Well, really, yeah. you call them friends now, bro. I call, call them friends. friends. Call them friends. Yeah. Listen, that that was huge, man. That was huge because that was exposure, you know. Um, yeah. And those guys, literally, man, you know, me, you, you know, you, you know, men and women were walking around, man, shaking everybody's hand, you know, yeah. being friendly, you know. And we yeah. was like, wow, like this is this, this is nuts because, you know. You always presume how they're gonna be, right? And right. they were just family, man. Like they were just family. family. The guy, the guy that plays on P Valley now, what's his name? Um, Tyler Lefley. Yeah, him, man. He's a real cool cat, man. Real cool cat. Down in the valley, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I don't know anything about that. I don't watch that. I don't know. Yeah, anything. I mean, me either, me either, me either, me either. Right, <laughs> but listen though. So we know that you took a leap of faith. Yes, you took a huge leap of faith, man. You shocked so many people by this leap of faith that you moved to the great state of California, Los yeah. Angeles. At that, yeah. tell me, you know, you know what you can tell me that is what went into that transition. It was something that was brewing for some time. Okay. And, and again, I'll, I'll say, like how I said before, sometimes God will use other vessels yeah. to plant seeds. Yeah. So as we were just talking about the celebrities that would come, right. in our downtime, the conversation would always go like this. No disrespect to Orangeburg. We see what you're doing here and we think that mm -hmm. that's great mm -hmm. but why are you here again facts so Tough. they would they would keep saying that yeah and then of course i would always rebuttal well you know this is where i was born and you yeah. know this yeah. is you know blase this is where my family you know so, right. so right. and then one day one of them said it mm. and it sounded so different wow and I began to start looking into the wheel start turning. Making that transition. Yeah. And what what many don't know is that I packed up my life in a matter of two weeks. Wow. In a matter of two weeks. And I came out here to LA. And it's just been rewarding ever since. So that's how I uh that's how I took that leap of faith, man. It, it was, I, for me growing up, I always knew I wanted to be in entertainment, but growing up in South Carolina, I didn't see where that could be attainable. So I fell for something that was a little more practical, hence why right. I became a pharmacist. Right. But 
I've always had a great love and respect for the arts and entertainment. Right. And so I, I thought that this was my time to do what I was more passionate about. Right. And so here I am. Listen, man. Hey, we, listen. We were a little upset. <laughs> we, were, we were a little upset, a little bothered, right? A little thrown off. But, yeah. you know, you know, but I, I left, you know, South Carolina also, you know, so I know how it feels, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you know, so I appreciated it, but you just meant so much to that community that, you know, people couldn't, you know, let's say if you would have said, okay, you move to Atlanta, all right, cool, all right, you know, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah. But yeah. you moved across the country. That's, that's like, wow, man, like, you know, but, but you had many talents that so many people did not know about. I mean, so many people did not know about. Now, now, man, you over there, man. You're acting, right? Yeah. Modeling, man. Yeah. I'm talking about, man, you're directing, okay? Listen, you're doing it all over there, man. What, what, like, you know, how does that feel? You know, coming somewhere, you know, and just blossoming like that. Again, I didn't imagine. You know, wow. you hear so you hear so many different stories about people who make that transition to a place like LA. Right. And you know, you have some success stories and then you have some not so successful stories. Right. But you know, again, like I say, I just allow God to navigate my life and I just totally trust him. Mm -hmm. And so my prayer to him was, if I'm supposed to be here, then I need for you to make the provisions for me to be here. Mm. I need for you to make the proper connections for me to remain here. And right. since I got here, like everything has really been falling into place, which lets me know that I was listening to the right voice. You know, a lot of times we say, oh, God spoke to me, no, God yeah. ain't <laughs> nah, And God ain't flesh, saying nothing to you. Yeah, he ain't saying nothing to you. <laughs> wow, man. So listen, yeah. you know, but now, you have not forgot about South Carolina. How can I? You have not forgot about South Carolina, man. You come home and, you know, most of the time, but his was crazy. Most of the time, when you come home, you're giving back. You know, yeah. Yeah. you know, pre-COVID, you know, pre-COVID, man, we will always see you going back to schools, man, talking to the kids. You know, yeah. like that would be your primary focus, man. Going, listen, man, going back to your community, man, and talking to those kids, right? Giving those kids, you know, you know, that exposure. Yeah. So, from. The Dr. Lee, who was working right there, you know, who was working right at, you know, uh, when he was he was working for Walgreens, mm -hmm. versus versus now, the Dr. Lee, who who's living in California, mm -hmm. right, who's directing, man, who who's modeling, who's now working out, like these, okay, ah. how does? <laughs> How does that feel different from that Dr. Lee who was working there to now to now living in California and now coming back and now showing these kids what you really can be? It's different because for one, I believe that we become so others can be. Wow. Okay. And a wise man once said, in order for a man to be great, his reach must always exceed his grasp. Oh, man. So it's different and important for me to come back to talk to students because I feel like my life is a little different than the norm because I have something that I'm skilled at, which mm -hmm. is the profession of pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And then I have something that I am talented by which mm. is the arts and entertainment so mm. i get to show them that whatever it is that you desire to do regardless of the area that you are in mm. Mm. 
you can achieve anything that you put your mind to, especially if you keep God first. Mm -hmm. So it's different because I'm not just Dr. Lee now, but I'm also Dr. Lee, I'm Maurice, I'm Mr. Lee, and all of those facets that make up who I am as mm. far as professions are concerned. Mm. So I love being able to come back because I believe that we become what we see. Wow. So if they see it, then it becomes attainable for them. Mm. And it becomes a huge dream for them. So mm. am I going to always come back at the opportunity I can? You bet. Mm. My responsibility. Mm. Listen, man. <laughs> Listen. And you have, man. You, you're a man of your word. You, yeah. are, you are truly a man of your word. But my question is because the scary part, Dr. Lee, mm. the scary part is, is you're not done. <laughs> you're not done. And you're still growing. You're yeah. still growing. You're still climbing. What's next for Dr. Lee? Wow, what's next? Uh, I have some great projects that are in the pipeline. Uh, for TV and film. Uh, something mm. real huge that I'm working on, Terrence. Oh, I can't wait to share it. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be thrilled. Mm. And I think a lot of, for a lot of people, it's going to be a deep sigh. Wow. That's, that's how huge and monumental it is. Wow. And I felt like for someone from South Carolina, it was important to produce mm. this project. And so, mm. yeah, yeah, that's, I can't He's wait. smiling man. big. <laughs> I, can, I cannot wait, man. It's kind of hard over there, Dr. Lee. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's big, it's big. So yeah, I, you know, I have those in place. I have uh, an endowment that I have with the Medical University of South Carolina. Right, right, right. Yeah, and so with that, that's an endowment that was created to attract minorities to the Medical wow. University of South Carolina's College of Pharmacy. So that's growing. And then we're still trying to strategically execute the reintroduction of the MA Lee Scholarship Fund. Mm. So it's a lot that I have going on. And then I just, of course, started my own production company, Mo Productions. See that, see that. Yeah. So congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So it's it's a lot that I have going on, but um very, very rewarding. Right. Very rewarding. Yeah. Well listen, man, we we're so proud of you. We are so proud of you. Thank we you. We are thankful for you. Thank and you. you know, you know, you know, me and Miss Tuck was talking earlier, man. I was telling her that listen, this guy is the reason why I work alone. You know, because <laughs> I came in. He came, remember man, you, you may not remember this, but you came in Walgreens that day, man, and you walked past me. And I remember. Like, you, know, you know, normally, we ain't trying to smell dudes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't trying to smell dudes. Yeah. But normally, you walk, like, you literally, man, walk past me. My nose was like, and I was like, yo, my man smell amazing. And you told me to, to, to go get uh, the angel for me. Yeah, remember yeah. that? Now yeah. I'm like, yo, yeah. yo, it is cologne for me forever. Okay, it's cologne for me forever in the day. So I will always. <laughs> I, will I remember always that. Appreciate you. you know what I'm saying? Because man, you were so clean, man, well dressed guy. But I was not a smelling good type of dude when it comes to cologne. That is, right. you know what I mean? You know, I never right. put forth. You know, you know, you know, you know my energy towards cologne. But I get it. You know, that day my brother, you genuinely, literally, man, changed my life. And now I now I know what cologne can do for you. Yeah. It can do a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but listen, brother, so we also realize, man, that you've been working out lately. Huh? You've been doing a little work not there, Dr. Lee. That ain't the same Dr. Lee that was in Orangeburg, brother. You know? What went into that, man? Plus, has that been therapeutic, you know what I'm saying, for you? Well, 
Well, Terrence, you, you, you talk a lot about Los Angeles. Hello. <laughs> hey, you know what Los, I'm Listen, Los Angeles is the city of image, okay? <laughs> That's facts. That's facts. That's so, all facts. All facts. You know, so again, being a part of this industry right. that relies a lot on how you look, you right. know, you have, well, I had to, I had to man up and, right. and, and measure up. Wow. And so, I decided to, I decided to connect with people who were more knowledgeable in that area and um, decided to make a conscious decision that mm -hmm. this is something that I wanted, not just for the, the outward appearance, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was healthy inside as well, right. you know, right. um, especially being a healthcare provider. Right, my exactly. skill set. I exactly. wanted to make sure that if someone is taking or looking at me for advice, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that when they look at me, they can say, "Okay, well, he looks the part, so therefore right. he must know what he's talking about." You understand what right. I'm saying? Oh, most so, definitely. Yeah. Most so, um, so it was important for me to really, really, <laughs> really become serious, serious about this, and it's yeah. very therapeutic. Terrence, there are times when I will get up at one or two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning to go to the gym to work out. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's very okay. very therapeutic. Very therapeutic. Wow. And wow. I, and I think I think for me, I'm more fascinated by the fact that your body can transform into whatever you want it to. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. And dog. So, I'm learning a lot about my body. I'm learning a right. lot about how I can ingest certain things. Not right. illegal stuff now. I'm talking about right. of course. You know, of course. foods. Right. I'm talking about foods that right. can really help to develop and shape who I want to become, right. who I want to be. Right. You know? I like to look good on the red carpet, man. Doc. Well, <laughs> Doc, you're doing it, okay? You're doing it, man. You're doing it, brother. I'm telling you, man. Them suits be fitting different now, dog. <laughs> them suits fit a little different. It okay. ain't bad. <laughs> so we listen, man. We, we appreciate it, man. Because it it is truly, man, humbling, but it's so inspiring because we know where you come from. Right. And we know where your heart at. We know, we know the work that you put in. So whatever you receive, man, whatever blessings that you know, you receive, brother, well-deserved. Well-deserved, man. And you, listen, listen, man, you get nothing but a huge standing ovation, you know what I mean? Thank you. From Thank us, you. Thank you. because we know, like, we know the real Dr. Lee, you know what I mean? And we, we, we know where your heart at, you know what I mean? And we know where you're from. We know that you put family first before anything. Oh, yeah. And, you know, so we also know that you love your community, man. And so yeah. whatever good times, you know what I'm saying, that you're having over there, listen, it's well-deserved. It's well-deserved. Whatever youth juice that you're drinking, okay? <laughs> it's something you're drinking over there that you keep, you probably gonna tell me about, okay? You're probably gonna be petty. You're not gonna tell us what you're drinking over there. It's something you're drinking over there, dog, because you have not, you have not, listen, you have looked the same age for the past 10 years, brother. Okay? Now, I don't know what's going on with you over there, but I'm gonna find out soon, because dog, you're not Asian, dog. dog yeah, you're, you're crazy. Asian. You're crazy. Okay? <laughs> you're not Asian. <laughs> but dog, I just want to say thank you again for coming on the vibes, man. You know, you know, we, listen, this was an honor, a huge pleasure, man. And, and listen, we love you. And we will continue to keep cheering for you. You know, we will we will keep praying for you. And thank you. Thank you. We hope whenever whenever that you come back that we can see you. You know what I mean? Because you. Yeah. you mean so much to us, man. Thank you so much, my brother, for coming thank on the you. show. Yeah. And let me ask you a real quick question, man. If you can talk to that 17 year old young man, right, leaving Utahville, right, coming from a small town, right? Let's say come from a small city, 
that has dreams and goals, man, that may be facing some financial, you know, let's say difficulties. What would you tell that young man? I would tell that young man, number one, stay focused. Mm -hmm. You never get to experience the greatness that life can offer if you become distracted. Wow. But understand why distractions come. Right. They really don't come to deter you. Right. They actually come to strengthen you. Mm. Should you remain the course. Mm. Always keep God first. Right. Never allow anything or anyone to be placed above him. Come on. And always remember that what you sow, you will always reap. Mm. If you receive love, give love back. Come on. In all right. cases. Right. Regardless of how you're treated, mm -hmm. regardless of what's spoken, always remain true to who you are. And I assure you, the sky is not the limit. Mm. Man, listen, man. Listen, man. Spoken like a a true scholar, man, okay? <laughs> Legendary, the legend himself, Dr. Lee. Listen, how can they follow you on social media, Dr. Lee? Uh, they can follow me on Twitter at D-R-M-A-L-E-E, -E, which is Dr. M-A Lee. Okay. Also on Instagram at D-R-M-A-L-E-E. -E, and okay. on Facebook under Dr. Maurice A. Lee. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee, man. We Thank know you. that you have to get to those, back to those Los Angeles streets, okay? We know, know you on a time difference there. COVID. So, still, so <laughs> the night's still young over there, okay? We're not going to hold you up. But we appreciate you, man. We love you, man. And keep up, man, because you back. you're inspiring. Thank That's you so that. much, Thank brother. You. Thank you, brother. Anytime. And, and listen, I'll tell you this. If you yes, still sir. have your platform, by the oh, time... Yeah. I'm ready to make my announcement. I'm coming back here so you know firsthand. Let's go. You already right. know I'm with you. Okay. You already know I'm with you. Gotcha. All right. All right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. I love you, bro. Much love back to you. Take care, bro. All right, you too. Peace. Yo. King Dumb. Community vibes. Community ties. Uh -huh. Terrence Tucker is the brother who's connecting the tribe. Uh -huh. You say you won't shine, come get your shine on. Get your shine on. You say you want vibes, come get your vibe, get on. Your vibe on. Community vibes. Community ties. Uh -huh. Terrence Tucker is the brother who's connecting the tribe. Hey, yeah. you say you won't shine, we'll get your shine on. Shine on. You say you want vibes, we'll get your vibe on. Vibe on.